All right, welcome. This is Siobhan Murphy and Sherry Johnston from ERLC. We're educational consultants, and today we're going to share a short video clip on planning with illiteracy and numeracy progressions. To accompany this video, there is a learning guide that has some key understandings, questions for consideration and discussion, as well as additional resources. So let's get started. So let's talk about why we want to use the progressions. Three great reasons why they are helpful to our work as teachers. One, it's a, a really wonderful tool to support what we're already doing in our classroom. So shouldn't feel like an add-on, should just feel like a resource that we can consult. Second great reason why we'd want you to be familiar with them is because a lot of teachers would tell us, you know, I'm not really a literacy or numeracy teacher. I'm not a math person. I'm not a language arts teacher. I'm an art teacher, a phys ed teacher. And the great thing here is that they're going to help all of us really zoom in on the kind of skills we need to develop in our students across the curriculum. And finally, it provides a common vocabulary amongst all of us K to 12. All right, so let's look at a scenario. So this is um, a learner outcome from art from level one, so grades one and two. And we're asking the students to mix primary colors and lighten and darken colors. So some of the literacy skills or understandings that they're going to have to have is um, thinking about the background knowledge that they bring. So do they understand um, you know, primary colors and, and how you mix them together to lighten and darken, which also leads into vocabulary as well. Do students understand those terms? lighten, darken, do they understand what we mean by primary colors? So they're going to have to have that knowledge and understanding in literacy in order to help them achieve this outcome. We also think about them having to communicate meaning and their understanding and how that plays into the literacy skills they need as well as numeracy skills they need when we, they talk about and think about the quantity of the colors of paint that they're using and the different measures that they're using as well. So let's look at another scenario. This one here is grade 5 health and so here we're asking the students to identify and implement an effective time management plan and so some of the things that uh, we can think about to support students in their understanding of this is really making sure that they have those numeracy skills of time and time management and the importance of how that's going to play into them meeting this outcome. So some of the things we can do as teachers is posting the schedule for the day and having students refer to it to develop their numeracy skills regarding time and also it can be helpful too to explore information shared in many different forms lists, pie charts, so incorporating again some of those literacy and numeracy skills and um, looking at how we spend our, our days in our school and the activities and how long they take. So really tying in key literacy and numeracy skills to develop the students in their understanding of this health and life skills outcome. So let's move up to a grade 7 science class and sometimes the progressions can be helpful when we look at where we know students have difficulties and challenges and one topic in that program is all around forms of energy and we're asking students in the skill outcomes to conduct investigations into the relationships between and among observations, gather and record qualitative and quantitative data, and then of course to analyze it. So what I've often found working with these students is that they really struggle to make good sense of data and charts. They're not great at extrapolating and, and understanding the big ideas there. So this sends me into the progressions because this can guide me on some, some modeling and some lessons that I can build to make sure they're going to be successful. So if I look at the literacy side of things, I can start with helping kids acquire that info piece and, and going to get some more information about alternative forms of energy. We can talk about how to organize their texts and we can help even with some of those comprehension strategies, making sure they can read the information they're finding and make sense of some of the online materials. The numeracy side can help students with the data set and, and showing them different ways that data is shown looking at how data can be skewed, just helping them interpret and represent that quantitative info. So hopefully in the end they're able to, to go in there, do their inquiry, show what they know. I might need to help them with some background vocabulary. I might need to help them evaluate websites or even just looking at how to read a legend on a table. Speaking of which, if you ever find that a math glossary might be helpful, Learn Alberta created one and it goes K to 12 and you'll find uh, lots of definitions there that could be helpful to your students. So lots of tools to access. 
If we look at grade 10 social studies, here's another example. And here they uh, look at issues. And this one's all around to what extent should globalization shape identity. And 1.9 is quite interesting because it talks about evaluating the efforts to promote languages and cultures. So you're thinking, OK, whew, how can I help students to zoom in on this outcome? And if I pull my progressions, I can really look at even the very first one around, what does the word evaluate mean? How can students show me they understand this? What, what do they need to do to evaluate? And if I look at inquiry questions, I'm going to want to seek examples of how cultures are promoted and what impact is resulting. So I need them to get in, get familiar with a whole wide variety of texts and sources. Hopefully I can find materials at different reading levels to make sure all my students are successful in their inquiry and learning. I definitely want them to learn how to evaluate perspectives, who wrote the texts, and acknowledge any sources that we've used. I'm probably going to really want to zoom in on background knowledge, build some vocabulary, like what does linguistic revitalization mean? And lastly, I really want to help them organize what they've been learning and craft that persuasive essay so they can evaluate promotion efforts. Now, not to leave numeracy out, you know, I might quite possibly want them to dig into background knowledge and how do we read the data and how do we read these efforts to promote uh, the language and culture. So really being able to understand what they're reading. I might need them to have some kind of a multi-tiered classification system, so we might need to find examples of that. I want them to know the best way to display what the data is that they've come up with and make informed decisions, and hopefully be good again at critically assessing claims or arguments. And lastly, we might need to revisit how to visualize, analyze, and represent these relationships between two or more of these things. So. Lots of literacy and numeracy skills that I can develop as we're working on this outcome. So let's talk about progressions in subjects that we often don't think about in terms of literacy and numeracy. So we've pulled some grade 8 examples and looking at the outcomes, we would invite teachers, if you're working with a group, to take some time and talk through these and figure out how could the literacy and numeracy progressions help even in outcomes where initially the sense would be I'm not sure where they fit here and yet I think you'll see as you have some rich conversations there's lots of sub skills that we can go after to make sure students are successful with these outcomes. From previous group discussions teachers have talked about health eight and and they've zoomed in and said you know it can be really helpful to help students understand the difference between describe and explain and making sure they know what conformity and dissent means. So lots of conversation around that task in those terms. In Drama 8, teachers have commented on this idea of interaction and what interactive, uh, interacting effectively and constructively looks like and helping the students co-construct those concepts. And in Phys Ed, we can talk about this uh, personal effects of exercise on the body. So how are students going to analyze that? What kind of data are they capturing? How are they going to show their analysis? So lots of ways we can take these progressions and shape some of the modeling and the mini lessons that we'll likely need to put in place to support the students. All right, one of the things that we wanted to share with you um, today is that currently in development is the curriculum development application, so the CDMA, and this is where the new curriculums are going to be um, presented as they are released. One of the nice things in here is that this application will allow teachers to link learning outcomes across various subjects, as well as see how the competencies work in and the progressions. So just knowing that the progressions will be embedded in the new curriculum, and then as I said, you'll be able to see how they link from subject to subject. Um, we would like to thank you for your time today and just remind you that that learning guide is available to support this video. Um, again, to highlight some of the key understandings, some questions to consider, as well as any um, additional resources. Thank you for your time.